Hello and welcome to episode 39 of the Insider's Guide to Project Cars 2 where today we are going to be taking a look at the cars of the Ferrari Essentials Pack DLC and going through two laps of the Mugello circuit to basically talk about the best driving techniques for extracting the best performance and lap times out of each of the cars that feature within the pack. Now we're going to be starting from the older more vintage cars then working our way through up to the more modern hypercars and race cars there's a couple of race cars in there there's quite a few road cars and a couple of track cars but the first car that we're going to be starting off with is the Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta SWB now this is a old classic car and because of that it has a very simple four gear H pattern gearbox very very skinny tires quite old suspension uh, drum brakes so it's braking performances are going to be too great and then the car itself actually has a 3 litre V12 uh, produces in real world somewhere between 240 to 280 brake horsepower depending on how the owner has tuned or has the uh, engine tuned and what we've gone for here in Project Cars 2 is a power output of 260 brake horsepower, so quite nicely in the middle. But because this is an old classic vintage car, you are going to have to drive it like one. You'll need to be smooth, you'll need to be patient, and it's all about balancing the weight of the car to get the car to do what you want. Now because of the skinny tyres, it's quite easy to get the car to understeer or oversteer they don't have a huge contact patch and therefore don't have a, a huge amount of grip but still the car is really really nice to drive once you do get it to the limit and over the limit the car goes into a very nice progressive slide and if you really want to you can kind of hustle the car a lot more and get aggressive with it and get aggressive with the wheel and it can put a pretty big smile on your face but if you want that lap time performance you'll need to be smooth obviously with the drum brakes they're not going to have the performance of modern day disc brakes so you're going to have to brake a fair bit earlier and be a bit more progressive and just let the car roll into the turns once you get your braking done as well you don't want to get too heavy on the brakes and you certainly don't want to be braking and turning at the same time because of the car's weight and the suspension you can see the suspension movement and the general weight movement when you get hard on the brakes here you can see the no nose dive down quite visibly in the cockpit it unloads those rear tyres and if you are turning and braking heavily at the same time when those rear tyres get unloaded it is going to want to overtake the front and you're going to get a whole ton of oversteer when turning into the corner so make sure to do your braking in a straight line obviously come down the straight just sitting and chilling a little bit as we approach the first turn and we'll break out the 200 brake marker board and down into second gear and just let the car roll into the corner as you turn once you get to the apex that's when you can start to balance the throttle a little bit and then as the corner opens up you can get heavier on the accelerator as well if you get quite heavy on the accelerator during the mid corner like so you get a mixture of things happening obviously you get the understeer if you if you accelerate too early it can also lead to oversteer as well especially if you've got a lot of steering lock on so be mindful of that but you can see that the slide is really nice and progressive very easy to catch but this car is a lot of fun to drive just could, took a little bit too much speed there coming into that right hander which kind of compromised, compromised our line through sweeping left but it is all about balancing the car quite nicely through the corner getting it in that neutral position which means that you have to do minimal work when it comes to steering inputs so nice and smooth feeding the power in lifting off getting the weight down the front tires so the car has the grip at the front to turn into the corner and the rear 
wants to rotate slightly into the corner as well as you come in through the corner. So when you start to balance the throttle a little bit more, get that weight distribution nice and even between the front and the rear. And then as you come out through the exit of the corner, that's when you get more aggressive on the throttle and feeding the power in as the corner opens up. You could be nice and smooth, the car will reward you with some good lap times. Just waiting for the car to turn in. There's that neutral throttle position. And then there's the more aggressive acceleration coming out through the exit. And as you can see, we've gained a little bit of more lap time on our second lap in comparison to the first lap. And we're going to go across the line. And that is going to cover, cover it for the 250 GT Berlinetta SWB. And we shall move on to the next car. So the second car that we're going to be looking at is the Ferrari 250 Testarossa. And this is another golden Ferrari from way, way back in the days. Now this car is very, very similar to the 250 GT. Again, skinny tyres, drum brakes and a four-speed page pattern gearbox. It's a three-litre V12, produces about 295 brake horsepower, so it's about 30, 35 more horsepower than the 250 GT. But because it is quite an old car and the brakes aren't so great, you will need to be braking much, much earlier than you would usually, compared to a lot more of the more modern cars and because the tyres are quite slim, don't have a huge amount of grip, don't have a huge contact patch, the way you drive this car is going to be very, very important. It requires a very smooth, progressive and methodical approach to it. As a case of balancing the car, if you want to go quick for some fast lap times, if you start to kind of get aggressive, wheel and deal the car around the circuit you'll find that the car will start to get into some rather nice progressive slides that are probably quite easy to manage and catch but it will require you to work the wheel a fair bit more whereas if you take a, a much smoother more progressive approach the car rewards rewards you with a nice balance actually then he's shifted up into fourth there rather than down into second Still, it didn't really affect us too much. You can see, having to work the steering wheel a little bit through the turns, despite trying to be smooth and progressive, just let the car roll through the corner, balance the car a little bit into a kind of a neutral position, and then feed the power in more as you come out through the exit. If you get too heavy on the accelerator, one or two things will happen. Either you'll understeer heavily, or you'll get quite a bit of oversteer which can be quite nice and it does help you to rotate through the corners a little bit as we drop into second gear here you can see we've got a little bit of understeer give the car a boot full of acceleration the car just goes into a really nice slide there and all I really had to do to save that was pretty much just straighten up the steering tiny little bit of opposite lock from now and then but otherwise just letting the car just slide and rotate its way rather nicely through the corner I have to break out a 200 meter board. It's the brake drums rather than discs. Let the car roll through the turn and then feed the power in. Just nicely balance, balance the car. You can see it visually as well. The rear end squats a little bit more and just rotates rather nicely through the corner. That's the best way to get the most out of this car. If you get heavy on the accelerator, like I said, you either get a ton of oversteer or a ton of understeer. It's usually the former. It's only really a ton of oversteer that you uh, understeer, sorry, that you get if you carry too much speed going into the turn. But just be mindful of those those thin, skinny tyres and the brakes. But this car is such a joy to drive because of that nice progressive slide. It's really quite light and nimble and you can have a lot of fun playing around with the car as well it's 
So it's balancing the car quite nicely. Now accelerating more coming out the exit of the corner as you saw there was barely any slide that time. Do your braking in a straight line as well. If you do your braking whilst turning into a corner, the rear end will want to snap out on you quite easily because of the softer suspension and the amount of uh, weight shifting going from the rear to the front when braking heavily it just unloads the rear tyres they'll have very little grip and just want to come round on you so try and do your braking in as straight a line as possible this time we're going to be smoother coming out the exit here trying not to let the car slide out too much and there we have two laps with the Ferrari 250 Testa Rosta an absolutely fantastic classic vintage car so the next car we have is the Ferrari 512 BBLM and this car has actually been placed within the group 4 car class within Project Cars 2 rather than the group 5 competitors that it would have raced against in real life the main reason for that is because the car is quite heavily at a disadvantage compared to the other Group 5 cars. It weighed about 200 kilograms more and about 300 horsepower uh, was its deficit in comparison to the horsepower outputs that the Group 5 cars were running. So rather than having to try and uh, rebalance the car and bring it in line with the other Group 5 cars, we put it up against the Group 4 cars because it's a much, much better match in comparison uh, to those, uh, especially over the longer endurance races. Now, the car has a flat 12 engine, produces about 475 horsepower. So it's still a decent amount, but it's got some interesting engineering choices that came with the car in terms of its uh, the place that it was the gearbox was situated they made for some interesting handling characteristics uh, initially but they ended up solving that by putting uh, quite skinny front tyres on in comparison to the rear tyres it does help with the handling of the car but it's, there's still a little bit of funniness to it in a way the car does feel good it feels responsive and quite nicely predictable and manageable obviously if you're overdriving the car carrying, carrying too much speed into the corners then it will understeer and bite on you but there's this nice little sweet spot uh, when you feed the power in that just kind of helps to rotate the car as well so you can see that the car is turning in rather nicely, coming through the corners. And providing you're not too heavy on the accelerator or getting on the power too early, you'll make the corner just fine. If you do get on the power too early, then you will start to understeer wide. And if you've got a ton of uh, steering lock on as well, it'll probably bite you and kick out the rear end, especially when you accelerate hard on the curbs. second gear for this long right hand to just help bind the car into the corner a little bit more oh, just ran a little bit wide there line was a little bit funny through the second part of that chicane but it's alright we'll go for a second lap second gear is probably the wrong gear to be using for this corner but the car does feel good. It handles quite nicely. You can be a little bit aggressive and wrestle with it. Obviously, don't wrestle it too much. Don't carry too much speed coming into the corners as well. Because it will understeer you. Make sure to be in the right gear as well. It really helps the car to tuck into the... Tuck into the turn. If you're in a gear too high, then it will, it will just understeer through the apex. Oh, got caught on the curb on the outside there. cost me the apex of the previous left-hander so just be smooth with it the car will be nice and responsive for you it doesn't really get into really any heavy slides um, obviously the car has no traction control no ABS no stability control there's no assist whatsoever so bear that in mind when driving the car 
there's nothing there to lean on and save you if you do get into a really heavy slide you will have to ease off the power and counter steer into it to try and catch the car so third gear coming into the chicane just balance the car nice and smooth with the throttle and then plant it as we come out through the exit once the corner actually opens up for us This right hander here is definitely a second gear corner. Taking it in third, the car just understood a little bit more. Make sure you get your gear shift done before you get into somewhere like the chicanes here, like this. Much, much better run this time. Keeping it within the white lines of the track. Leave it in third gear, just let the car roll through the turn and then feed the power in as the corner opens up for us and unleash that 7 475 horsepower coming down the straight here at Miguelo and that is two laps with the Ferrari 512 BBLM next up we have the legendary Ferrari F40 pretty much anyone who is into cars into motor racing probably knows of this fantastic piece of automotive engineering the car has a 2.9 4 litre twin turbo V8 producing about 490 brake horsepower. Turbo's able to run peak of 22 psi, so it's quite a lot of power coming from those turbos. H pattern gearbox, and this is a road car as well so we're going to have to be smooth and progressive with the car and not fight it too much to get it through the corners brake a little bit earlier than you would initially anticipate just balance the car coming through the exit and there's this rather nice sweet spot just as the turbos kick in you can hear them hissing away behind me now as I come down this short straight there's a nice little sweet spot with the throttle and just as those turbos are kicking in upon the exit of a corner where the car just rotates rather nicely when coming into the turn obviously the nose is pretty good and pretty responsive but you don't want to be carrying too much speed going in as you will understeer wide but there's this you can see there the car just nicely neutrally rotating through the corner just as the rear tyres are starting to break traction just ever so slightly not a huge amount, just bounce the car through here, be nice, smooth and progressive be patient with the car, it rewards you quite nicely front end does have a good amount of grip, you just need to make sure that you're in the right gear for the differential to work its magic and then obviously Getting a little bit screwily that catching the curve slightly awkwardly through the first part of that chicane. So yeah, the front end's quite nice and responsive. You just don't want to take too much speed that the front end washes out. And then you can see that just as we get hard on the accelerator and the turbos start to kick in, the rear wheels just slip ever so slightly and it just helps to rotate the car through the exit of the turn. Obviously, if you do it too early in the corner, you'll probably get a lot of understeer or potentially even a lot of oversteer as well. Car can be a little bit screwily under braking, so be wary of that. Make sure you give yourself plenty of time and you do it in as straight as line as possible as well. You can see there the car understeering a little bit as it's using just a had a bit too much throttle through the the mid corner and there we go keeping the steering wheel almost straight as we came out through the exit and the the rears the rear of the car just rotating rather nicely in a very neutral progressive way it's just so easy to manage it's the best way that I found to get the most out of this car it's really as the turbos start to kick in and start hissing away that you can feel it, there it is again you will get a little bit of oversteer from time to time but it's very very easy to catch 
and the car just feels so nice and responsive to drive on these tyres. So just be smooth with it, be progressive, watch your, watch your braking, don't brake too late and don't brake too hard, it's pretty easy to lock the, tire, uh, lock the wheels on this car because it doesn't come with any assists at all, no ABS, no traction control, no stability control, it's very much a raw driver's car so you need to be gentle with her under braking, let the front come in and then once you know you can get the power down on the exit just bring that power in let the turbo spool up and accelerate down the straights up to 200 odd miles an hour is how quickly the car was able to drive back when it rolled off the production line magnificent magnificent car very very fun and enjoyable to drive as we catch a little bit of oversteer there coming through the turn in third gear but this is the legendary Ferrari F40, fantastic piece of kit and a lot of fun to drive in Project Cars too. The next car that we're going to be driving is the Ferrari F355 Challenge. It's going to be the last car of our hitch pattern gearbox drives that we're going to be doing for this episode. And she is an absolute joy to drive. They basically just took the road car, did the usual race upgrades, so it's got a rear wing. Upgraded brakes, upgraded suspension, and obviously racing slicks as well. The engine's pretty much unchanged from the road car, produces about 375 horsepower, making the thing an absolute joy to drive as well. So very, very responsive through the corners. The car was slightly twitchy there under braking. Dropping from 6th down into 5th. Didn't quite get the timing of the gear shift right. But the car just... It just eats corners for days. It's just so easy to... Turn in. It's just so quick and responsive. Which gives you a lot of confidence with the throttle. To get on it harder and earlier than you perhaps initially anticipate with that you can really push the car a little bit more as well obviously you don't want to push it too much because it will it will bite you but it just you get so much confidence from it it's a very confidence inspiring car to drive just bouncing the car quite nicely coming through the chicane here but as you can see I'm not having to fight any oversteer the car is just be being really responsive upon turning. Car going a little bit light there at the rear as I was on the brakes coming into this right hander. Make sure you get your gear shift done before coming into the turns. Take the chicane near enough flat out apart from the initial entry. Dropping two gears down into third for the final turn. You can see the car is just wanting to respond. So you can hear the outside tyre now starting to load up a little bit more. As it's building up the grip. But because it's race spec, it's just fantastic to drive. Such a gentleman's car. It doesn't bite you too hard if you overdrive it, if you're too aggressive. It's re only really under braking where you really need to be cautious. down through the gears nicely the car just winding to turn in just bounce the car a little bit and then feed the power in a little bit earlier and the car just nicely binds up probably could have left it in fourth gear coming through those corners Taking the curves, the car's so quick and easy to catch as well as obviously it's mid-engined. So the balance of the car feels really, really nice. Coming out through the top here. Just 
being easy on the brakes, trying not to lock them up too much, and the car is just so good. Caught the curb there a little bit, just kicked the car into overstep. This is where we had a bit of oversteer last time coming down the hill, so we're going to be a little bit more easy on the brakes this time. You can see the car's much, much more stable and planted coming into the turn. See if we can take this near enough completely flat out, which you can just nicely brush in the curb through the second part of the chicane. a little bit of throttle just to balance the car quite nicely and as the corner opens up that's when you can get on the power even harder and the car will just nicely flow you through and out the exit of the turn such a joyous car to drive just be relatively smooth and patient with it and just build up the speed progressively as you'll see and feel the confidence building in the car it's so nicely and well balanced and poised but we are now going to drop the H shifter and move on to our next car. So next up we have the Ferrari 458 Speciale A and this is the first of the final three cars that we're going to be taking a look at where we actually adjust the uh, tuning setup only slightly, it's just one little change. So using the loose default setup is uh, the one that I tend to use with the car. Just under the ECU engine and gearing tab, we are going to adjust the traction control slip from its default value of 10% up to around 20, 25 if you're feeling a little bit more brave. Uh, I generally tend to go with 20 just to allow the car to slide a little bit more once it does actually start to get into a slide. And it also helps with uh, putting down the power when you do have pretty good traction uh, coming out the exit of corners where there's kind of minimal uh, wheel spin. I find the traction control system can be a little bit too intrusive sometimes. So we're just going to quickly save this setup and I'm just going to call it loose one uh, just for simplicity's sake and actually get on with the lap. But this car, the Speciale A, is a fantastic piece of kit. Such a nice, well-balanced handling car. Mid-engined. V8, 4.5 litres, producing just over 600 brake horsepower. And this thing is an absolute joy to drive, as you'll see. So very capable, so very easy to drive. I'm actually going to turn off the stability control there as well, as I won't be needing that. But when it comes to braking, obviously make sure you get, you get, all, get all your done. Oh, sorry, get all your braking done before you actually get into the corner and the car just nicely wants to turn in and rotate. You can also play around with it a little bit as well. The slides are quite nice and easy to manage. The car is nimble. It just it loves this track day sort of environment. But if you really want to get the best out of it in terms of performance and overall lap time, then you need to be smooth. You need to be steady and progressive patient with the car don't hustle it too much as you can see they're just taking my time coming through the turn and the car is just responding very very nicely not having to put in a huge amount of steering lock there's not really any understeer there's not massive amounts of oversteer as well when you drive the car nice and smoothly just be progressive with the throttle and corners and situations like these once the car the corner does start to open up that's when you can start to bring the throttle in even more as you can hear the V8 screaming away behind me so just balancing it nicely catching the curb slightly awkwardly there through the first apex and then coming in at 100 brake marker board Shifting down into fourth gear. You can use third if you really want to. I'm just going to hold it in fourth. Try and straighten up the exit a bit more so we can apply more of that power and using the curb on the exit. It's got decent straight line performance, this car as well. Reaching, reaching decent speeds, but obviously be aware of the tyres, be aware of the brakes in that they're not race car levels. So you will have to brake earlier to make sure that you get the car slowed down and turned in because if you do turn in with too much cornering speed, the car will will bite you. 
and you won't make the turn. You can see there just how neutral the car looks going through. A very, very slight progressive slide. The car just wanting to rotate rather nicely from the rear, so just balancing the throttle. Tucks into corners so nicely. You can use the brake a little bit to turn into the corners if you if you want and need to as well. But obviously don't get too aggressive with it because you will just cause the rears to lose the grip and over rotate and overtake the front of the car. Just turn the car in, just balance the throttle, give it a little bit, let the car roll into the next apex and then feed the power coming through the next apex and out the exit of turn. Bit of an awkward line there. Let the car run out a little bit too wide. So balancing the throttle, clipping that curb quite nicely. And the next curb, and you can see the car's got good amounts of grip. You could almost take that second apex in the chicane. You could almost take it flat out, not quite though. There's a good exit coming out of the long left-hander here to finish our second lap. But the 458 Speciale A, fantastic piece of kit. Just be smooth, progressive with the car, and it will reward you very, very nicely with good, solid lap times. So the second to last car that we're going to be looking at is the Ferrari F12 TDF. A fantastic road car produced by Ferrari. It's got a V12. 6.3 litre engine and I do also adjust the setup here but I do only make one change and that is the traction control slip once again just upping it to around about 20-25% just to help with the sliding of the car and applying the power coming out the exit of the turns. So actually coming on to the lap then, this car produces a rather nice 769 brake horsepower so there's plenty of power to play with but the car is fitted with the Pirelli uh, P0 Corsa Trofeo R tyres which are very very good and makes this car absolutely fantastic for driving on tracks very enjoyable Ferrari have produced a very capable track day car here despite a lot of journalists saying that it's an absolute animal that just wants to kick out the rear end. And if you do want to experience that kind of driving, then you can fit the uh, Pirelli P0 Corsa tires to the car. And that will give you a sense of kind of how animalistic this car can be on tires that are fitted as standard coming out the factory. But with this car, or the default setup is fitted with the Trofeo R tyres which are a bit more track day focused. It does make it a bit more of a track focused car and enhances the performance there. But even still, because this is a road car, you need to be smooth and progressive with everything that you do. You can't really hustle the car too much because it will bite you with a load of oversteer. So coming through the corners, make sure just to balance the throttle, get your braking done nice and early before the turn, otherwise you will see the two ends of the car swapping round, which you don't want to be doing. You want to be facing the correct direction, going around the track. Just being smooth there through the chicane. Just no, don't hustle the car too much and just let it do its thing, be smooth and progressive. I've gone a little bit too deep here, coming into the final corner. A bit of opposite lock as we stamp on the accelerator to come down the straight. So we'll do one more lap. But as I was saying, because it is a road car, you do need to be more progressive and be smoother. Don't hustle the car too much coming into the corners. So get all your braking done. Let the car just roll in and balance the throttle, balance the car coming through the turn. And then once the turn actually opens up, and you kind of got the car in a bit more of a straight line, that's when you can use a bit more acceleration and a bit more of the car's power to accelerate down the straight. So get the car nicely 
tucked into the corners, coming into the braking zone, bleed off the speed, come off the brake, let the car just roll into the turn, balance the car, coming through is a little bit tight there with my line coming into that right hander. Just nice and smooth and progressive all the way through all these turns and when the car does get a little bit of opposite lock with that traction control slip value around 20-25% you can let the car slide a little bit more and play with it as well car wanted to rotate a little bit there on entry and there's the overstairs I was playing with the throttle you can hear a bit more understeer there coming through the chicane so try and get that braking done in a straight line because as you see if you brake and turn at the same time the rear end will want to snap out on you And because the tyres have got the grip, you can plant the throttle a little bit more and just play with the car. It's a fantastic car, it's the F12 TDF, but that is a pretty good example there of how to drive it and how to get the most out of it. And finally, the last car, the Ferrari FXXK, and this thing is an absolute monster. Now, just like the last two cars, I do also adjust the tuning setup for this car as well. It's just using the loose default setup as a base. And then under the edit setup menu, what I do here is adjust the uh, engine braking and also the traction control slip uh, under the ECU engine and gearing tab. So with the engine braking, its default value is 1 for the FXXK. And I adjust it up to around about 4 or 5. It just takes the edge off of the car and the downshifts uh, when braking and turning into corners. I find with the value of 1 it's a little bit too aggressive and it does make the car want to oversteer quite a lot into the corner. Bring it up to 4 or 5, it makes it a little bit less aggressive. It makes the car a little bit more manageable and a little bit more predictable when coming into the corners as well. And then also with the traction control. Its default value is on 10. I up it to around about 20, 25%. And this just makes the slides and the power slides coming out the exit of the corners a little bit more easily manageable for me. I find with the lower traction control value, the traction control system is a little bit too, too intrusive. So if you kind of want to hold a slide coming out the exit of the corner and kind of power through it, uh, it makes it more difficult to do that. It kind of makes the car a little bit more unpredictable there as well. And then also just generally trying to get the traction down coming out of corners and applying the power uh, with the lower value of around 10 percent it does bog uh, the car down a little bit as the traction control system is trying to fight uh, any wheel spin having the higher slip percentage it just allows for a little bit more wheel spin and therefore it makes it a little bit easier to apply all the power that the fxxk has and it has a lot so we're going into the lap here and the actual figure that the FXXK is putting out is 1,035 horsepower. So with that, you have got to be smooth coming out the exit of the corners. Make sure you have the car nice and planted and you're progressive with the throttle. But also because of all that power, as you look at our top speed, it is very, very quick in a straight line, which also means that you have to brake way, way earlier than you would initially like to in other cars. And then coming through the corners, you do need to be very smooth, very patient and progressive as well. Just make sure that the car is nicely balanced and you're not wrestling or over overdriving the car too much. So make sure you get your braking done before the corner. If you are trail braking into the turn, it is quite easy to lose the rear end because there is so much more power and so much more speed that it's quite easy to lose track as to how quick you are actually going into the corner now the car does before uh, does produce sorry similar sort of amount of downforce levels to that of a GT3 but it is so much quicker in a straight line so whilst you do have that kind of aero performance there obviously we're on track day tyres rather than the typical GT3 slicks but even still the corner and performance of this car is phenomenal if you have it set up in the right kind of window 
and you're just driving the car in a manageable, progressive sort of fashion. So just being patient with the car, just waiting for the car to turn in, and then you can plant the, the throttle coming out of the exit. We'll do one more lap with this one as well, unleashing all that power coming down this straight. Like I said, you'll need a brake earlier. And you would with other cars being nice and progressive. Drop it down into third gear for this one. Turn one. Nice and smooth with the throttle. Just balance the car coming through the corner. Don't hustle it too much. Nice and smooth with the steering as well. And you can really feel the car pick up and go with that torque when you do plant the throttle. A little bit of oversteer there. And that's what I mean with the traction control system. Or the traction control slip and there as well as you can see I wouldn't have been able to hold that slide like I just did if I didn't have that traction control slip value up at 20% obviously it's a kind of more of a personal preference thing I'm not saying it's gospel to use the traction control slip around that sort of value but it does just make it that little bit easier to just kind of go with the slide and control it with the power and then with the steering so coming out the exit here Obviously this lap is a lot lot slower and has also been invalidated as well. But hopefully you get an idea as to how to drive the FXSK and how to get the most out of it. One final tip that I'll actually cover here as well, if I just park up. Uh, if you go into the ICM menu, if you are able to uh, access it, you can edit your control bindings in the uh, controls option menu and you'll be able to bind buttons to the ICM by default it should be uh, set to the d-pad but if you go to the fuel map option in the ICM uh, we have three options here we've got rich we've got normal and lean and this basically adjusts the power output of the FXSK so you can switch between these and get various different settings starting with lean essentially what you'll get is 600 horsepower coming from the uh, system both the engine and also uh, the curse system. The curse system won't actually deploy any of its kinetic energy. Uh, all it will do is basically just recharge the uh, Kerr's battery. We won't actually deploy anything and you're just relying on 600 horsepower uh, from the actual engine itself. If we switch this to normal you get an, uh, a power increase up to 720 horsepower. Here obviously you start to use a bit more of the Kerr's energy uh, however you're not using a huge great deal and obviously you're using a bit more of the uh, engine power as well. It just adjusts the fuel map there to put more fuel into the engine and you'll be uh, a little bit quicker and a little bit more slightly more wild than lean. Both lean and normal I find are quite manageable anyway uh, but usually the car will be set to rich as standard. This is where you're going to get the full 1035 horsepower. The Kerr system is going to be full basically hot lap attack mode so it's going to be putting down uh, a lot of the uh, Kerr's energy down into into the drivetrain system to try, really try and put a lot of power and obviously help you accelerate. You will see a difference in your lap times when switching between the various different modes but Rich is the standard one that the car will come with and you'll see that it's using the uh, the Kerr system quite aggressively and obviously the engine is going to be set to its maximum power output and we've uh, combined both the, the Kerr's energy and also the power output of the engine you are going to be pushing out 1035 horsepower. This thing is an absolute monster but it's such a joy to drive when you do get it rewarding as well. That's going to conclude it for this episode. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you've enjoy been enjoying the content that has been going up on the channel, consider subscribing to the channel. And yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hopefully I shall see you soon in the next episode. But until then, have fun and take care.